Mokta exclusive dimensional being high with another exclusive. Today's video is going to be about Sun and Cancer, Moon and Gemini. So basically, when we're dealing with these energies, this is a two-day aspect. The moon has just entered Gemini, so if your ass wake up, little stuffy nose, runny, uh, throat messing up, that don't mean go take your ass to the hospital. That means go get your ass in the kitchen, put some tea on the stove, and drink up. All right, so look. Dealing with sun, <clears throat> basically the sun is basically your physical representation. That's how you express yourself. That's what you push out as far as it being a cancer. That's dealing with the new ways and new start of basically being being a caring and being emotional towards home and security and family. Moon and Gemini, that's dealing with thinking the communication. That's dealing with intellect. That's dealing with um being mutable and being adaptable to changes in your life. That's dealing with that element. And the moon is crescent right now. So that's basically like it's on its way to basically being to the new to the new moon. As in Leo, which is the sense of attention. Everybody should be the sense of attention. Especially if you want to be the sun. Especially if you want to express yourself. That's the day you basically push out that energy. And that's what we all need to basically be doing. Acting out on these energies. So of course, if the moon is Gemini, you need to be curious. You need to be basically adaptable in your own way. Especially if you are a different element. You need to basically join the wagon so of course it's gonna be difficult for people that's not really into this um astrology shit <clears throat> especially if you don't know yourself it's gonna be very difficult it's a good time to basically tap and tap into something get yourself spiritually inclined it's when you ain't lost up into the um current and don't get washed up this shit is real out here also we got mercury and cancer that's dealing with mine that's dealing with emotional, that's dealing with logical natures and shit. So basically, if you're too left brain, you can't really resonate with a person that's pretty much right brain, which is dealing with the feelings and emotions and fire. So that goes to show if if basically what you say got to resonate with my feelings. If it don't resonate with my feelings, then I don't really care what you about what you're saying. Venus and Gemini, that's basically dealing with charming. That's dealing with romance, pleasures. So it's a good time to basically write love letters and interact with people, places, and things all around the world. Mars and Aries, so that's dealing with actions, new drive, and new passions, and new desires. Push that out. And, of course, it's going to be basically acting acting without thinking. We got Jupiter and Capricorn, so that's dealing with goals and ambition and uh, expansion. So Continue working on your goals and being practical, and, and your fruits and labor is going to start growing. Saturn is in Capricorn, so that's basically dealing with power, responsibilities, and structure. So make sure you put in your power towards your responsibilities and structure towards responsibilities so Saturn can grant you more structure in life, or you're going to lose your structure. Uranus is in Taurus, so that's dealing with revolution, revolutional, practical natures and shit. So coming together, working for each other, basically helping out each other. In a practical, more humanitarian way. That's what we need to basically be doing in times like this. Neptune is in Pisces. That's dealing with a spiritual journey, a spiritual awakening. Everybody need to be spiritually inclined with themselves and tap into their spiritual powers. And if you're not, then something's not something's very wrong with you. And you're really going to be spiritually lost. Pluto is in Capricorn. So that's dealing with death changes and um, new structures as being constructed in your life. Basically, we're in the age of Aquarius, so it's dealing with new ways, technology, and it's basically this fake-ass virus. is basically the hoax of what they're using it for. So that's why Pluto is in Capricorn. That's why you're seeing all these changes. All this shit is coming to the end and shit like that. Chiron is an Aries, so that's dealing with growth. That's dealing with um, headstrong and basically utilizing your headstrong to get rid of all your past traumas and basically doing it, doing it in a practical native nature north node is in gemini so that's dealing with the love that's dealing with the lungs and basically this is your need to basically push and pursue your way towards knowing new things and not being bored and fixated with your life so that's the basically dealing with the um north node that's what you need to get comfortable with doing and get out of yourself no for a little bit and just basically getting that north node in gemini just a little bit ascending and pisces so that's dealing with daydreaming and that's dealing with imagination and uh expression so basically have an imagination add water to it and it's going to manifest on what you want to bring into this world midhaven is basically in sagittarius so that's dealing with travel that's dealing with gamble and of course play the lottery you might get some money feel me put your mind to it because jupiter is in capricorn right now so basically the abundance and a way for you to really want to get in basically 
experience and bring things into existence is basically here in Capricorn and structure. So the way you do that is basically going for it, not being too naive to certain shit. Also, we got basically we dealing with sun opposing Jupiter. So that's basically cardinal is the sun, home and security. And opposition is Jupiter, and that's basically dealing with fire. So, of course, Jupiter want to always get out there and expand and grow and be mutable and, and adapt to changes. But Cancer is cardinal. It's not, it don't want to change this way because that's how it starts. You feel me? So, if you bring these two together, it's going to be some opposing energy. Sun is opposing Pluto. So, Pluto is dealing with death and transformation. And Sun is dealing with its own way of cardinal emotion. So, basically, dealing with the past. So, if... um. Pluto is here and they're trying to work together. It's not going to work together because Pluto is death and transformation, getting away from that shit. The sun is dealing with ways of being fixated. Well, not fixated, but basically staying in the past. So y'all know what I mean by that. Also, we got moon conjunction Venus. So that's basically dealing with changeable ways versus new creation. So be more adaptable in ways of having beauty and insight towards people, places, and things, and fruits and labors can go in your nature. nature. We also got, um, the, we got moon sex out Chiron, so basically that's dealing with mutable ways of changing up the way you think, and basically being, being consistent on, um, new ways of trying to get above any traumas that you had previously. We got Venus sextile Mars, so that's dealing with two cardinals, so that's fire and a new way to start to fire to be aggressive and be impulsive uh, and also being having balance in your relationship so of course venus and mars have been having some good sex so that's a good sign you know they don't really like each other but you know it's good this is a good aspect right here to basically give it your mate fuck the shit out of her buy her some flowers buy her some a little bit of clothes on what's crazy you know put her in a put her in a vibe and space that y'all basically can resonate with each other also mars conjunct chiron so that's basically deep healing and um, acting, actions is more louder than words, you know, for me. So that's the only way you're going to deeply heal yourself is basically putting actions to it. So if it's an Aries, you got to act without thinking, for me. And basically, once you act without thinking, well, you can do both. But being that it's, um, what is it, deep healing, Mars conjunct Chiron. So you're either going to utilize a practical nature of deep healing or you're going to basically act without thinking. So for me, you got to be balanced on both. So remember, thought first practical last jupiter sextile neptune so basically this is basically being mutable in both ways to have structure and expansion and growth towards humanity and other people around you and shit so this is a good name this is a good time to utilize that jupiter conjunct pluto this is like a good fortune right here because jupiter is basically dealing with expansion growth pluto is transformation death basically you need Pluto to transform anything so you can utilize Jupiter to uh, keep going. But if you get too too stuck into Pluto, you're going to get lost into your desires. And Pluto going to transform shit for you. Feel me? So don't get too lost. Also, and don't don't get too lost into Jupiter because you're going to have, you're going to get so much lost into your desires and shit. And you basically, mutable, well, you're going to adapt to new changes and shit. But, you know, you got to also use Pluto to get, to get rid of that shit. Oh, changes and adapt to new changes and shit also we got jupiter sex town i mean we got sun opposing saturn so that's basically dealing with um getting rid of any relationships ties as far as like toxic energy and shit people places and things that you don't resonate i mean just learn how to get rid of them and shit and not hold, not clinging on to the past or what they did to you in the past this is basically letting go like i said the sun is basically dealing with past trauma of course whether it's good and bad, and uh, basically Saturn does the same. So you got to learn how to use these both to basically get rid of it and try to psych your mind up to thinking that it's the opposite instead of, instead of what it is, truly is. Sun, Tron, Neptune. So this is peaceful feelings and emotions. So it's a good time to basically go out there, do charity work, cook for somebody, and you're going to reap the benefits of the doubt. Mercury, sextile, Uranus. So that's basically dealing with uh, thinking of communication, mutable ways, fixated ways of thinking outside of the box. Because the bigger your imagination is, the bigger the universe can work with you. Because if you're thinking outside of the box, you can create more imaginative ways and more ideas and concepts of things to basically play onto your natures. Also, we got Mercury squared Chiron. So it's basically this is dealing with past, um, past reoccurrence, reoccurring events. So basically, you know, 
this is a, basically a good time to utilize your mercury and you and learn how to not hold on to the past and just basically rise above that and don't let it basically hold you hold you down we got venus sex out chiron so it's basically dealing with balance healing shit so if you're balanced with the way you get over your traumas this is a good time to utilize that and use both so this is a sex out so buy, buy you something that's dealing with materialistic nature like stones and shit to basically hide and get rid of those um traumas that took place in the past also we got mercury squared chiron so that's basically dealing with past i mean i said that already neptune sextile pluto so that's dealing with shadow work basically being in the behind the scenes to get rid of anything any pursuits that don't hold you no hold you no purpose and basically transforming your way in a new version we're in a new world so we're not in the um age of pisces in the movie in the age of Aquarius. so that's independent innovation and this is basically revolution so it's time to take your motherfucking power back or your ass gonna get transformed into 2000 years of being here again and you don't want that shit also now we're about to get into the houses so if you got gemini in your first house this is basically Learning how to adapt to new changes and new ways and pursuits of your passions and goals and basically watching what you say because other people may take offense to it. Also, being patient and not um, being the person that, that, that'll be opposing energy because of course, the way you talk and the way you think is basically might be out faster than everybody else. And might, somebody might feel away about that. Also, so be careful. Also, we got second house. This is dealing with work. This is dealing with on flexible, changeables flexible change being fixated and having adaptable natures you know second house is stubborn when this third gemini is in it so basically you got to find new ways to adapt and change the way you do things so you can basically have a grand scale and dealing with this two-day element you don't want to miss no days no days off the sun and the moon don't stop shining so trying to find new ways and pursuits to basically work with you third house is dealing with com learning how to have compassion and learn how to speak from the heart so this way others can basically feel your sympathy and they're, you don't want to be in the process of basically you t somebody telling you something that basically you will make it seem like you don't care what they're saying but you, you you basically think fast and you communicate with fast and this is an advantage right here so things will be all chaotic and shit so learn how to like you know talk with a good expression feeling the emotion even though you too logical but shit happens per fourth house dealing with personality instability versus um logical emotion so basically practice the way you talk practice the way you express yourself to others so this way people won't take won't look at you like you too opposing and shit so you gotta learn how to work with that fifth house is dealing with ego selfishness versus other people needs so basically you may be vulnerable to have selfishness towards other people places and things or you basically being a face and upfront towards other people and they might just say yo this motherfucker think he the shit but of course you're gonna have it that opposed the engine when you got the fire in your child so basically you know so Learn how to like be balanced and shit and be adaptable in ways how you express towards others so it can be a 50 50 thing and not a 150 thing. Also, we got six houses dealing with healing emotions. So basically, make sure you meditate and don't be thinking negative and shit and try to basically put yourself in adaptable, changeable way and shit because Mercury does fall here, but you know, you got to basically get a, get off, get out of that circumstance, situation, negativity. Seven houses basically watch what you say. You might come up with about your past ex and basically how he look or look good or some shit vice versa so be careful what you say because it might be used against you and some people might just not have might not like that shit a is dealing with dark humor and basically dealing with learn how to do learn how to look at things in a good way a good way of everything and your thoughts ain't chill your feelings emotions ain't chill you got to question these shifts or it's basically going to be used against you these other spirits that's fucking with you don't get lost into that. Ninth house dealing with laziness and uh, just talking, sh talking all that shit. But basically, don't be a philosophical. P but actually, make sure your actions is following with your words, because people will look at you like you talk much, talk too much, yada yada yada. But basically, be careful with how you express this. But people might just look at you opposing them and shit, because basically, this is exaltation with Gemini's and Jupiter. Tenth house is following your heart and basically meditate and get enough sleep so you won't be all over the place. Because basically, this can be very hard and they don't like being here. Eleventh house is adapting to interactions with other people placing things try not try not to use so much ego and shit or get out of place but you know be very careful with your health and shit and watch what you eat also 12 house is basically dealing with for avoid drugs adopt, dealing with drugs and shit try to race basically get right with yourself mercury falls here too so make sure you're thinking is right make sure your feelings and emotions the way you express yourself and interact with other people placing things make sure you get yourself right first meditate go within and take care of yourself take care of your health health is wealth and basically you know without that you can't really move around so basically you know be very 
adaptable how you do things and try not to get caught up. And that's the, today's energy. I love y'all.